modernizing the entire federal government. Secretary Shulkin just spoke about how that vision is being carried out at the VA. And this morning, the president launched a great new era in American aviation, starting with the modernization of our outdated air traffic control system. Today, everything from the cars on the road to the cell phones in our pockets use GPS technology. But Washington has been unable to upgrade the air traffic control system from ground-based radio and radar systems, despite 14 years of attempts by the FAA. This delay has left us stuck with a system that just can't keep up with an industry that has grown exponentially since it was designed. Our current air traffic control system costs our economy as much as $25 billion a year in delays, inefficiency, and unreliability. This is a problem that nearly everyone agrees needs to be solved. Joining the president today were representatives from the air traffic controllers union, passenger advocates, leaders of airline and cargo companies, and every former COO of the FAA. And those aren't groups that typically agree on much of anything. But even with all of these stakeholders behind air traffic control reform, it was still stuck in the Washington political machine. President Trump was elected to unstick these kind of common sense efforts, and we'll be continuing to work with Congress on getting these principles turned into legislation and getting that legislation to the president's desk. To accompany the president's announcement, the Department of Transportation today launched a new microsite, that's smarterskies.gov, which will continually be updated with fact sheets, Q&A, and other information regarding ATC reform. Infrastructure is only one of the many action items on the president's legislative agenda. The healthcare team is engaging with Congress daily on the American Health Care Act, which we hope to see the Senate take up soon. New stories of skyrocketing premiums and fleeing providers are coming almost every day. Just last Friday, Blue Cross Blue Shield in Nebraska announced that they are canceling their Obamacare compliant bronze and catastrophic plans, and the only remaining plans they currently, which are the only remaining plans they currently sell on the exchange. That leaves the entire state with only one choice for insurance on the exchanges, and that insurance insurer raised rates by 51% last year and is threatening to pull out of Iowa completely. With our health care system breaking down around us, this administration is committed to finding a solution. This afternoon, Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of HHS Services Dr. Tom Price, Administrator of the Small Business Administration Linda McMahon, and Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Seema Verma are holding a listening session with female small business owners to talk about how we will repeal and replace Obamacare with a plan that benefits all Americans. Tomorrow, the President will welcome representatives and senators to the White House to talk more about what's next on the legislative agenda, including repealing or replacing Obamacare and crafting a revolutionary tax reform proposal that will provide relief to hardworking taxpayers. And on Wednesday, Infrastructure Week continues with the President's visit to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he will speak about his wide-ranging vision for rebuilding our country with a special focus on repairing our 12,000-mile inland waterway system, which carries $230 billion in commerce annually, while our locks and dams crumble because the federal government can't fund the critical repairs they need. The president will present his sustainable solution to this problem in Ohio on Wednesday. And because I know all of you are very deeply concerned about the births of each of my children, I wanted to uh, carry on with tradition and announce that my son George will be two on Thursday. So happy early birthday to George. And with that, I'll take your questions. John Roberts. Uh, as you know, also on Wednesday, as the president heads to Ohio, James Comey is scheduled to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee. And there's a question as to whether or not the White House will allow him to testify for Thursday. 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 Did I say Thursday? Did I say Wednesday? I'm still jet lagged. I'm still jet lagged. Yeah, sorry. On Thursday. If only uh, they had that same politeness when correcting us, huh? Uh, he's scheduled to testify on Thursday. And there is a question as to whether or not uh, you will invoke executive privilege or if you will allow him to testify. And I have a second question. Uh, the president's power to assert executive privilege is very well established. However, in order to facilitate a swift and thorough examination of the facts sought by the Senate Intelligence Committee, President Trump will not assert executive privilege regarding James Comey's scheduled testimony. Uh, I have a follow-up on that question. On the President's tweets regarding the travel ban, um, Kellyanne Conway's husband pointed out that such tweets are not helpful when it comes to the Solicitor General's ability to make an argument, an effective argument, before the Supreme Court. 
Is the president concerned that, that he may be painting the waters of the legal system by issuing such tweets? Not at all. The president uh, is very focused on uh, exactly what that order spells out, and that's protecting Americans. That's protecting right. Protecting national security, and he has every constitutional authority to do that through that executive order, and he maintains that, and that position hasn't changed in the slightest. John? Thank you, sir. Uh, why is the president picking a fight with the mayor of London? Oh, God, this asshole again. Uh, I, I don't see that the president is, is picking a fight. There we go again. I, I think, that, again, the president's point uh, is something he said, frankly, back, uh, gosh, it's been almost two years now, a year and a half ago, uh, when the president talked about how we have to be more committed to national security. One of the reasons we have uh, the travel ban here through that executive order is a focus on national security. That was the point he was trying to make. But, but, the, president, but the president is saying that, that the mayor said there's no reason to be alarmed by the terrorist attack. That is not what the mayor said. The mayor... ...attack are highly likely. He was saying don't be alarmed by the armed police presence on the street. And the president directly misrepresented what the mayor of London said. I don't think that's actually true. I think that the media wants to spin it that way. Yep. And I think that the president... The thing is no reason to be alarmed by an attack on a city. You think that's what, what he was saying? Look, I, I think that the point is, is there is a reason to be alarmed. We have constant attacks going they on. They should always be alarmed. Here, but across the globe, and we have to start putting national security and global security at an all-time high. President Trump has been very clear that's his priority, and he's not backing away from that. Steve? Yeah. Uh, Sarah, what, what was the president's reaction to the move by several Middle Eastern allies to sever ties with the president? Uh, look, the president's committed to continuing to have conversations with all of the people involved in that process with all of those countries. Uh, we want to continue to de-escalate that, and at this point, we're continuing to work with each of those partners. Did the president get any word that this was going to happen when he was in Saudi Arabia a couple of weeks ago? I'm not aware of that, but the State Department would probably be best suited to answer that question. Jim? Uh, yeah, uh, you uh, just mentioned the word uh, ban. Uh, the president, uh, when he was tweeting earlier today, said people, the lawyers, and the courts can call whatever Don't they want. Don't you have to get Josh? What we need and what it is, the travel ban. But early on in the administration, when you were trying to justify, when this White House was trying to justify the executive order on extreme betting and these travel restrictions, the White House was adamant that these were uh, travel restrictions, that it was not a travel ban. Uh, Sean Spicer from that uh, podium said it was not a travel ban. Is it a travel ban? Look, I, I don't think the president cares what you call it. He cares that we call it national security and that we take There you go. Burn. We go, wants, Sarah. Everybody wants to get into the labels and the semantics of it, but the bottom line is he's trying to protect the citizens of this country. The danger is extremely clear. The law and is And that's very what clear. it's about, but they won't report it. Is very clear. And the president's priority They'll talk about the narrative. Oh, he calls it a ban. Oh god, no, but then somebody comes in and kills uh, people. And they won't even cover it. There are going to be folks who are going to ask the question, was the president attacking the mayor of London? Because oh, my God. See? Not at all. And I think to suggest something like that is utterly ridiculous. Matthew. Uh, media for the president is extremely important. It gives him the ability to speak directly to the people without the bias of the media filtering. That's right. CNN, Cloud News Network, going down. Million, uh, ABC, NBC, media, MSNBC, you guys very, suck. Uh, important tool for him to be able to utilize. Matthew. Uh, um, so I have a question about uh, those executive order comments the president made this morning. Uh, he said that he wishes that his Justice Department had stuck with the original executive order. DOJ, of course, is part of the executive branch. If he wanted to stick with the original EO, why didn't he order the Department of Justice to stick with that? Why did he even sign 
the revised one if he wanted to stick with the original. And the purpose they were trying to meet the demands of the Ninth Circuit. But again, the president's been very clear. He wants to go as far and as strong as possible under the Constitution to protect the people in this country. That's what he felt the first executive order did. The second one was another version of that. But look, let's be really clear about what this is. These are six countries that were identified not just by this administration, but by the Obama administration and by Congress that are dangerous, they're unstable, they're volatile. And then frankly, they're not capable or unwilling to even vet people coming in or out. That's what this is about. Everybody wants to make it something different than national security issue. The media doesn't care about our safety. The president's so focused on pushing it forward in the strongest form possible. Or else he'd be telling the truth out there. And he believed the first one was safer and constitutional. Then why did he sign the second one if now he's coming out today saying, oh, we never should have done the second one? He was looking to, again, match the demands laid out by the Ninth Circuit and for the purpose of expediency to start looking at the best way possible to move that process forward. Oh, God, this idiot. Come on, talk about Russia. Does the president support his own travel ban as it is currently written? Absolutely. Again, he supports steps moving in the direction at all levels and forms possible. He wants the strongest executive order out there, and he wanted to move as quickly as possible, and that was the reason for that purpose. Two questions. The original intent of the travel ban was to provide a temporary pause in order to review immigration policies and procedures of those coming into the United States. That was January 21st, 22nd. It has been nearly five months since then. What progress has the administration made looking and vetting and doing some of that while this travel ban has been created through the course of this time? Extreme vetting is taking place, and that's something that's extremely important that was laid out in the memo. I think one other thing to... I'm sorry? Just specifically, though, what is the administration sort of working on when it comes to extreme vetting? Look, I think that, you know, if you want to get down into the details, I would refer you to the Department of Justice on some of those points. But one of the things I can tell you is that there are over 300 people that are under investigation that are part of this process, under investigation for terrorist-related activities. And that would be Hillary! And Comey. And that's a large part of the vetting process. Trust me. You just mentioned that the President's tweets are... Real question. Am I good? Filter. She doesn't care. Do you? You don't care, do you? No, because you're fake news, and I'm just going to talk over you because you said the tree outside my yard had said that Hillary Clinton blames it for losing her election. Oh, come on. I think that they matter in the sense that it gives him a communication tool. I'm not going to give that BIT. Uh-uh. No way. But at the same time, I do think that the media... You ain't getting my air time. ...over every period dot... Sarah gets it. ...was a perfect example earlier. He made a mistake. His colleague politely corrected him. If somebody from our administration had done the same, all hell would have broken loose, and it would be that, you know, it's just total, like chaos and conundrum here at the White House. So I think it's just the obsession over every detail of the President's tweets. Enough! Stop giving her air time, Sarah. No. Jen? Just a follow-up on the whole travel ban thing. The President also said this morning he'd like the Department of Justice to ask the Supreme Court for an expedited hearing. Has he done that? Has he asked the DOJ for an expedited hearing? He has. He has asked for an expedited process. I can say that. Secondly, can you say, on the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to the U.K., can you say why we don't have one yet? Is there a reason for the delay? Is something in particular? I'm not aware of that, and I'll have to check and get back to you on that. Sure, Major. Sir, following up on that last question, in addition to seeking the expedited process, the President says, so we can seek a much tougher version. Is a third version of the travel ban in the works? Not that I'm aware of, but I know that, again, the President's going to continue taking aggressive steps every single day to protect the people in this country. Exactly. I don't understand why you far left don't frickin' get that. My gosh. He's asked the entire administration. You know what? For everybody that's not for the travel ban, please go to Syria. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to Iraq. And you come back and you tell me, uh, I think we need a travel ban. Exactly. Based on the questions of Jonathan and Jim. Idiots. What is the origin of this confusion or misunderstanding about what the President said about the mayor of London? Is the mayor of London's fault? I'm sorry, I'm not following what you're asking. Well, the mayor of London and many there feel that the President not only took the comments that the 
Mayor London made out of context, but compounded an emotionally difficult experience for Londoners. What does, who's been, Okay, but are you concerned about the travel ban? Are you concerned about the safety for the United States? No. Let's talk about an argument, whether it was or wasn't. That's not the issue. But that's what they're right about. You'll see. And we condemn any act even similar to that. April. Oh, God. Here we go, April. Come on. Uh, travel ban in text. And Come on. You're talking about Say something about Russia. How does Say he something about racism. Not Come on. Himself when he's trying to get this thing to go through the Supreme Court. Well, again, I, I don't know how many times I have to answer this question. <laughs> so I'll try to do it one more time. Sarah, just uh, tell them. I think They're a bunch of idiots. They don't get it. He's concerned with national security. They don't care. In this country. Whether you call it a travel ban, of course, goes from one extreme. Come on, April. And goes back to the first. Come on. The Supreme Court, he's being you know damn well what he's about. He's about I mean, the safety the of Americans, but no, you, you know, got to twist things around. He can to move that agenda forward. I believe this could be a loss we have going for him and this administration with this extreme vetting or travel ban going from travel ban to extreme vetting, back to travel ban on Twitter and extreme cast. I don't think he thinks any step oh my he takes gosh. toward moving the ball forward in protecting the American people and imp implementing the executive order is ever going to be a mistake. Where's Sean? I'm sorry? Where's Sean? He's here today. Uh, this is part of my job as well. Did you guys ever ask any of the other uh, deputy press secretaries to make a new position now? I'm sorry. Is he in a new position now? or he, you just? I, I mean, he is taking on a, a little bit of extra duty at this point, so I think it's very uh, It's probably upgraded at this point, given that we don't have a communications director here. I did not say that at all. Can you, can you give us a little more today, April? There are a lot of demands. Do you see like how she tries to push it? Now watch. In the news, April is probably going to say, oh, Sean Spicer is fired. You'll see. Watch it. They might even say he's colluding with the Russians. Thank you, Sarah. You're great. All right. Awesome. Press briefing with Principal Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Sanders just concluded the White House. And today is Monday the 5th. Holy cow, is it the 5th? Anyways, you guys just got through watching the uh, circus over there. They just don't seem to get it, do they? The, the liberal tards and uh, those Dems and the media and stuff. Now, remember, when uh, April the uh, race baiter and also the Russian uh, insider. They're all Russian insiders as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <clears throat> how she goes, where's Sean? Watch. I guarantee you they're going to say Sean has a new job. Sean was fired or Sean this, Sean that. And then they're going to talk about, oh, President Trump was having an argument with the mayor of London, blah, blah, blah. But they're not going to report on what is really at, uh, is uh, what's important right here, which is the safety of our American people. They're not going to tell you that because they don't care. And and please go on to uh, YouTube. I'll have to try to find it. But there is one where they show CNN, uh, I'm sorry, Clown News Network, um, was actually uh, faking a news media out in London. They had some people come in dressed like Muslims and this and that, holding up signs and what have you. And they had the uh, producer there actually dictating where people should go, where they should stand, kind of what they should ask and how they should answer questions. You want real news? Go to Fox. I'm serious. Check in with Sean Hannity. And remember, uh, check with Sean, uh, uh, Tucker Carlson as well. And the five. Also, don't forget, you can go to Washington or uh, whitehouse.gov. They have a peti petition where you can actually either sign up, which is, uh, I've already signed to have that, uh, that Biache, 
um, Kathy Griffin, the new uh, American ISIS terrorist, arrested because she needs, they're going to make an example out of her. You watch. Um, so she's going to be arrested. I know she is. And also, somebody needs to go on there and put Hillary for prison for treason, for lying, for perjury, for um, selling out the USA uh, American people, um, our safety, and so forth. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired. I do what I can do as far as videotaping and putting this on my uh, video channel, my YouTube channel. I put it out there on Facebook, Twitter, and so forth because I am sick and tired of people with their political correctness, can't do this, can't do that. Just like that poor guy, um, I forgot where he's at, but he's a farmer, and he got backlash because somebody, some gay person wanted to have uh, their reception on his property, and he said no. And all of a sudden, oh my God, he, he's, a, he's a gay hater. He's a homophobia and this and that. Guess what? No, it's not. If somebody came to my house and says, can I have this there at your house? I'm going to say no. I don't care if you're gay, if you're a dog, if you're an alien or what. My answer is no. Respect that. But see, today's liberal tards, the millennials, the snowflakes and what have you, they don't respect anything. And they push the, the race baiting thing, the... Um, the gay um, phobia crap and all this and that. You want to know why? Because deep down inside, they're being puppets by George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and so forth. So let's get our America back. Republicans, conservatives, the far right, start fighting, damn it. Seriously, start fighting. Because we're not just fighting for us. We're fighting for our children and our children's children and so forth. This political correctness has really screwed up this world. And it started a long time ago. And as far as I'm concer concerned, it basically started with Clinton. Okay? And then it progressed into Obama and this and that. You know, you want to be what you want to be, that's fine. Don't be pushing the shit down my throat. I am a Catholic. I am a Christian. And if people don't like it, that's fine. They don't have to. But don't be sitting there pushing stuff down our throat. And then if we don't like it, oh, my God, all of a sudden we're haters. It doesn't work that way. There's no more respect in this country. And we, you better start getting the respect back, my uh, Republican friends. And I'm serious. Start fighting back and go watch Fox News and support uh, Sean Hannity. And remember, get the word out about Seth Richards. Um, there is WikiLeaks. Um, that is, uh, has John Podesta and Hillary Clinton literally on there, and they're talking about basically killing the leaker, getting rid of them. It's funny how every time somebody uh, always goes out there and they are going to either talk about the Dems or they're going to go to court, or in Seth Rich's case, he, um, we, all, we all know that he gave the information to WikiLeaks. They just can't confirm on it um, because of confidentiality and what have you. But we know it was him. And then guess what? He ended up dead. It's funny. Follow the bloody trail. And everything always leads back to the Clintons and the Dems. So anyways. Oh, and I forgot breaking news. And I'll have to report on it. I heard from um, an anonymous source told me that Hillary Clinton blamed my tree in my front yard for losing the election. I'm not kidding you. She really did. Um, I heard that from an um, anonymous source. Um, we can't confirm it. Just like CNN and M MSNBC and all those other fake news. Can't confirm it. And if, if you're not following me, I'm actually being sarcastic because I see that's what they do. But it is breaking news because I did hear it from somebody. Maybe it was somebody in my head. I don't know. Because that's what they're saying too about um, James Comey that one day they said that um, basically things are talking in his head. And they told him to say things. I'm not kidding. I have to find that video. Anyways, that's how far the far left has gone. Anyways, like, subscribe to my channel. And as always, uh, YouTube is demonetizing everybody's videos. I've also noticed that when I go to click on what type of um, category I want my video under, and I'll put news and politics, I go back either that day or within an hour or something. It comes up under auto and um, other stuff. Anything but what I had originally pressed because, see, they're trying to control so please go to Patreon, support me, and support the others as well. And have a good day. God bless. Thank you.